Rotomol, Route, Rig. From Minnesota to Michigan, we set sail with Windrider International. Plus, we're kicking it out on the lake with these guys. Let's find out how Minnesota's most unique fly fishing boat floats. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. These days, there are endless opportunities to explore thanks to water sports. And one sport that's always intrigued me is sailing. We're about to give it a try for the first time here in Michigan. So the sheets are basically lines that control sails. And then otherwise, a rope on a boat is a line. Okay. So. And with any first, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, right? <laughs> a little bit. It's a super easy boat to, to learn. The Windrider 17, it's a 17 foot trimaran. Um, I think what makes it the most popular for us is, you know, it, it kind of balances the size of being able to take a, a good number of people out um, with still the ability to sail by yourself. Sailing's history is grand, thousands of years old. This mode of transportation changed the world, instrumental in immigration and civilization. Many use sailboats for recreation and sport. Windrider International, established in 1995, is a sailboat builder based in the Midwest. The majority of our boats go to the U.S. Uh, with our kind of largest markets of being uh, primarily the Gulf Coast of Florida and then the East Coast. Company CEO Robert Sandberg says the Windrider Trimaran is a small sailboat with kayak seating and foot pedal steering. The company Windrider focuses on making these boats accessible for everyone and easy to use. They're made right here in the U.S., part in Michigan, but it all starts in Minnesota. Rhino Incorporated is the fifth largest custom rotational molding manufacturer in the Midwest. We are located in Maple Lake, Minnesota. Uh, we are about an hour west of Minneapolis. We roughly have around 130 employees. We've got six rotomolding machines. Today we are gonna be uh, molding and demolding and packaging up a, a 17 foot wind rider hull, which is a catamaran style boat. So we begin in Minnesota. This facility produces the hull and the two outriggers with a process called rotomolding. Rotomolding is a low-pressure, high-temperature manufacturing method. Heat and biaxial rotation create a hollow, one-piece plastic part. So each boat requires about 244 pounds of plastic, so they need this entire warehouse to house all that polyethylene. Mike runs the forklift and brings the Gaylords from the warehouse to the 550 deck. This is the 550 deck. Um, this is where we load the buckets, load the shots for all of our tools and the product that we're running. Employees work as a team to build a boat. We are a three-man team for this. It all starts at the beginning, loading the mold and making sure that the vent tubes, your party lines are all done correctly. Chris fills the buckets with plastic powder. So we do three buckets for the hull at 150 pound shot total. One bucket for the outrigger, which is 47 pounds. The plastic powder is the same consistency as sugar or salt. For this boat specifically, we use um, a 35 mesh powder. The color, surface white. All right, let's make sure the scale is accurate. No looking, people know. What? I think it's off by a few pounds. You guys, it is right? 
The scale is spot on, and the guys have to be too. Time for a quick break. When we come back, we bake, and later in the show, sail in Eastern Michigan. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Banks Outdoors. Aquarius Home Services. Ellsworth Cooperative Creamery. FVP. And Husqvarna. Welcome back to the Rhino Roto Molding Facility in Maple Lake, Minnesota. For our Wind Rider sailboat, we begin with the hull. Bins are weighed, then plastic powder gets dumped into the tool. So check it out, we're now inside the 17 foot mold. This is the top of the hull, this is the bottom, and the plastic is gonna adhere to this when it goes in the oven. And then this is the bottom half of the mold, and this is where all the powder goes. 150 pounds. All right, come on, let's do this. It's safe to go out here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's moving. Do I gotta keep rolling it down? Okay, you do the rest. The tool's top lowers onto the bottom and is secure. This preps for baking. The tool begins to turn as it enters the oven, the 550 Ferry Machine. The heated plastic splishes and splashes around, slowly adhering to the side of the tool. It'll cook it at roughly about a 550 degrees. During that phase, it'll take roughly about a third of its cycle to take that powder and transform it into a liquid form. So this is one of the largest ovens in the country, 20 feet tall. The door is about to open. Time to feel the heat. It takes the same amount of time to cool as it does cook. There are six giant industrial fans. This roto molding machine gets a workout. Along with making Wind Rider products, the ferry also molds parts for automotive, agriculture, medical, marine, and outdoor companies. The next step is demolding. Getting a glimpse of our finished boat takes some work. Once you crack that mold open, you will see it's just a beautiful looking boat. The outriggers undergo the exact same process with only 47 pounds of plastic. Then, time to trim. Now that our outriggers and hull are complete, assembling is the second half of the process. So we're done here. Next stop, Michigan. Think they'll let me check one of these on the plane? We assemble and set sail when we come back. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Central Boiler. Summit Beer. Ice Castle Fish Houses. Smoky Hills Outdoors Store. And Magnum Research. Welcome back. Fun fact. Sailing has been part of the Olympic Games since the beginning, in 1896. 
Windrider International says you don't have to be a gold medalist, though, to steer their small trimaran sailboat. The main parts of this 17-foot boat are the hull, two outriggers, a sail, the mast, and a steering system. Once all of the hulls and outriggers are shipped here to Michigan, the assembly process starts. Let's build a boat. Now we're in Burton, Michigan, and this is our production facility. We've got about 10,000 square feet here, um, and this is basically just an assembly facility. Building a boat takes approximately 16 hours at this facility. When it's busy, it's busy. Craig and Sherry run assembly. You know, Michigan has kind of a, a great skilled workforce. They have just kind of a lot of knowledge, knowing of, of the parts, kind of the customers, what people are looking for. Um, that's been kind of great to be here in, in Michigan. Craig, who does more of the hands-on work, and then Sherry, who does a little more of the, so the precision work of um, some of the, the mass, the uh, rigging, and then uh, some of the office admin. Craig works on the outriggers. He uses the hole saw to cut an inspection port. So the outriggers, or the Polynesian term is amas, are the, I'll say the outer floats. And now, my friend. Backing plates go inside the outriggers before the arms are attached. Oh yeah, power tools. That's right, you can't be afraid of them. <laughs> <laughs> the mast for this boat is 20 feet tall and will support the sail. Sherry rivets attachments onto it. With 32 years of boat building experience, she knows her way around power tools. My husband's very excited that I know about tools because I know what to buy for him. He calls me a tool snob, in fact. Now that's the mast hound. That's where all the shrouds attached to. Oh, okay. The there you go. There we go. I like this. This is my kind of gun over here. And after the mast, it's on to the hull. So, Craig, we're going to move her on in. Craig attaches hardware to the hull, including the trampoline tracks. Flooring, the two seats, and the steering system are up next. The material we use is actually pretty common. It's called King Starboard, probably your most prolific plastic that you'll find on, on, on boats. It's uh, extremely durable. Sailors steer with their feet, so adjustable foot pedals are a must. The size of the boat requires final assembly to move outside. We don't have the ceiling height to, to put up the mast inside, so uh, we'll take it outside and, and put the mast up. So the next step is installing the outriggers, and we are going to put the arms up into the cross beams. Team effort. Robert and Sherry install the mast and trampolines, plus finish rigging it. It makes me feel good that I can have a part in people's lives and how they can have fun on the weekends and get away from work. And they saved the best for last. The sailboat is built onto a trailer, so it's ready to ship. Windrider International has boats in 38 countries. Including the Philippines, Australia, to Tanzania. So it's kind of fun to see where the boats end up all over the world and how different people are using them.
Right down the road from the shop is Lake Fenton and the Fenton Sailing Club. And today, our testing process is at the mercy of the wind. Always at the mercy of the wind, so. My favorite part about it is, is kind of seeing uh, the fun that other people have with them. So this is the Wind Rider 17. Um, well, it's made for the outdoors because it's a, a sailboat to, to be enjoy kind of time on the water with uh, family and friends. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Escapade Campers, Minnesota Rebath, Border View Lodge, and Absolute Trailer Sales. Welcome back to the show. It's now time to go fly fishing. I've got my gear, a new rod, Roger helped me pick out a few flies. And when it comes to a good fly fishing boat, I think I know a few guys. Fun in the land of 10,000 lakes is endless. This is probably one of the most unique boats made in Minnesota. The Lost Creek Kick Boat. It somewhat resembles a canoe has oars like a paddle boat. There's this nice comfy seat in the center and you are your own trolling motor. Steve is the brainchild behind this mini cruiser. Oh, there we go. But his vision was to meet the needs of his two best friends. This is a nice way to fish with a bunch of us because we can kind of all go explore different things and keep an eye on the other guy and see if he's catching fish. Oh, there we go. We were kind of looking for the perfect fly fishing machine. It's like the quest for the holy grail. Just make them real big. <laughs> you know, about gaping. I hope you really have the Super X telephoto. This guy may be the day's smallest. And their favorite flies aren't the only thing that's catching some attention. And the fact that they're made out of wood, I think, appeals to a lot of people. Steve's boat business is based in his Twin Cities basement. I spend some time down here almost every night. Let's hope it doesn't fly off on you here. And through the years, there have been a few trials and errors. Now this is the Smithsonian here. Well, this is my first attempt at a kick boat. It actually works, but it's quite ugly. Well, now I call it the X-1 because it's experimental. His second effort was the X2. This was going to be the ultimate fishing machine. It's got an insulated cooler, and then this is, of course, for tackle. The latest version is the X3. It has the same storage space, but is more compact for hauling. The guys wanted a light, portable boat that could sneak into the shallow water but also be capable of handling the mighty Mississippi. This vision started on paper, followed by picking the perfect wood. Oh, wood is just beautiful. I like the look of it, I like the feel of it, and in some cases, I even like the smell of it. So far, I've been using cherry, walnut, and some Douglas fir. Various machines shape and carve the frame. It's more like building a model airplane because of the light materials you're working with. The shell of the boat is made from Okubi plywood. Once you get the parts made, they're pretty easy to put together. It's basically just gluing things up and assembling things. I just use packing tape. Hold it together until the epoxy sets up. And then the inside will be filled with epoxy. so I get a, a real strong joint. Once the hulls are assembled, the fiberglassing begins. The plywood is sheathed with a polyester resin, every step perfected with years of practice. They look like they've been around a long time. I mean, it, it doesn't look like a design that somebody just came up with a few years ago. Now these boats can be stacked in the back of a mid-sized car. 
and it only takes a few minutes to assemble. These are all flies that cloth ties. Oh no. <laughs> oh darn it. Oh, see that? This is way better than a canoe, I can tell you that. I used to do a canoe and, you know, in the water, I mean, in the wind, the canoe is all over the place. Perfect to sneak their way into those quiet spots and kick their way through the land of 10,000 lakes. Oh, I think this is the way to live.